My name is Lori Green, and I am the principal at Duluth Adventist Christian School here in Duluth, Georgia. And um, it is two days before school has started, so we have been busy getting things together. As you can see, I'm not necessarily dressed you know, appropriately today. But nonetheless, it is um, my pleasure to talk about our refugee students. Last year, we were blessed with 11 students, the refugee students. We have uh, two here at the high school, on the high school level. Um, we have a fantastic lady who has been, has a humongous heart for our refugee students. This year she's, um, as a matter of fact, she's on her way now with 13 new students that working together, you know, we're just going to find a way to bring them to school because these children, their families have a passion for Adventist education. And I would like to invite those of you who are listening to this, those of you who could hear me, to find out about are there any refugees that are in your area. These children have stories that, the truth be told, they haven't even, they cannot complete without crying. I know that we have had children that were born in the jungle. We have children that have gone through, you know, kind of atrocities that we could only imagine escaping with, you know, the bare minimum on their back. So, and their hearts are big. I'm going to tell you about one particular girl that has touched all of our hearts. Her name is uh, Daisy. You may meet her later on. Daisy was diagnosed with a dis with a with a disease. Um, I I think it is ITA, but to me it's very sim it's very similar to leukemia. And Daisy, I was a classroom teacher uh, prior to being a principal maybe two years ago. And Daisy was in my classroom, and I noticed the bruises on Daisy. And of course, being a classroom teacher, you're thinking, um, what's going on? You know, is this something that I need to report? But I trust her, and I trust her word when she told me, I don't know why I'm bruising. I don't know why I'm bruising. And then she complained about her leg hurt, her leg being in pain all the time. And so I encouraged her, did mommy take you to the doctor? Yes, but they don't know what's wrong. Our parents gathered together, they gathered around, and they took Daisy to the doctor himself and found out that she does have this particular disease, this blood disorder. Um, Daisy has been a trooper. She has, she, Kelly comes, Kelly who is the individual who's been working with them, she comes along her and another one of our parents, her name is Chung Hee, and they take Daisy to the hospital once a week while she goes through six, about six hour blood transfusion. Um, the, the, her condition is, is very severe, more than likely she will have it. Most usually it's something that you grow out of, but because of one reason, Daisy's not going to grow out of this particular, this, um, this particular ailment. I took Daisy to lunch the other day, and as my heart breaks for her, knowing all that she has to go through, because when she has those transfusions, she goes, it's almost like going through a little bit of the discomfort, it's almost like going through chemotherapy, you know, it's the pain, the discomfort is, is so bad for her. And I think about her going through all this after surviving from the jungle, after losing her father and after losing her brother and not making it out of, you know, making it out of Burma. And, and she says to me, Mrs. Green, I feel so happy. And my heart, and I'm thinking, honey, why are you so happy? She said, because I have a school that prays for me and I know that Jesus loves me, and I just feel so happy. And all of the children that come through our school, are they are so, they're so precious. And they have such a story to tell. And they're, while they're here, it is their happy place. We make sure that they are fed, we make sure that they are clothed, because we don't want anyone to think that they're any different from anyone else that is our, at our school. So if, if those of you that are out there, if you know of refugee students, if there's none in your there aren't any in your community, find the closest state, find somewhere, find a school that is supporting these children, and do what you can in order to help these refugee kids, because this is what Christ has called us to do. A few months back, we had the opportunity to go down to um, the community where the refugees are. We went down there to for a church service. So all the different tribes came together. Um, they usually set worship separately, but they decided that they would all come together because 
you know, I was going to be there, Miss Kelly was going to be there, some other representatives from the school was going to be there. And after the service, you know, everyone's heart is always open to the refugees and they want them to have, you know, they wanted to give them clothes and they want to give them food and all of those things are needed, desperately needed. But one of the things that I can't help but forget is when I heard of one of my students that I have is, is his mother started to cry and she said, what we want is Adventist education. What we want is Adventist education. The next day I went by there um, and just to, and when they understood that I was the principal of the school, I promise you 35 families plus came to me and said, gave me their child's name and telephone number and said, please, we want ad ad Adventist education. Can you please get us into your school? We want Adventist education. You know, it's huge. There is a school that is right next door to this community, but this is not what these families want because they realize the importance of an Adventist education and they want better for their children. So I encourage, again, everyone that is out there that has, that knows anyone, that knows someone that has a connection to the refugees, that they would please give towards that program. Yes, the mother was very, very concerned because she said that um, if her son, she said that she has seen, since her child has been in our, in our school, that she has seen a change in her child. She said he comes home now, and I'll admit this child struggles with reading, but she says he comes home every day and he reads his Bible. And she said she knows that if he was in a public school in that area, he would be in a gang. And she cried. And she cried because she was so grateful for Adventist education and she just wants desperately for, you know, the rest of her family to be able to have that Adventist education as well. Um, it's huge. It's huge. About a year ago we had our awards program um, and one of the little girls was there and she received, and that's another thing is, don't, do not think that these children are coming in here and they're not smart. A lot of these kids are really smart, you know, it just hadn't been tapped into. And uh, she, was, she got on a roll. And we gave her, you know, a little trophy or whatever, a little medal. And she was so excited, more excited. I mean, she just was totally excited. She was like, what? You mean all I have to do is to do good in my work and I can get this? And, you know, her teacher said yes. And she goes, oh, I got A next time. I get A's next time. You know, so they're not just excited about God, they're also excited about academics. You know, so what more can we ask for? Children that love God, that want to work hard.